What's up, guys? Welcome back to Average Takes. We got week 14 NFL pickums. Got another guest to you, our buddy Taj, Broomfield, KUSI guy. Been working here and there in the game, in, in the industry. Oh, yeah. I love it. Red Jacket That's Army. Sure. Red Jacket Army. That's, <laughs> That's fire. All right, let's get into it. We got Shenny. We got your Steelers taking on the Vikings Thursday and night. I can't ask for anything more. The Vikings coming off a loss to the Lions. You know, Kirk Cousins on prime time. You know, he's terrible on prime time. It's a game for the Steelers to put together a couple wins in a row. Just beat, just destroyed the Ravens in in Pittsburgh. Um, now we're traveling to Minnesota. There's a dome. Field's not going to be wet at all. It's going to be perfect weather in there. No excuses for Ben to throw like five interceptions. So still going to happen. I'm going to pick Steelers. <laughs> That's it. Easy money. I mean, I would not pick the Steelers unless this wasn't a primetime game. Unless it was against somebody else oh, other than primetime Kurt Cousins. games. Kurt sucks. I don't Kurt care if he's trash. Primetime, he's terrible. All eyes on me. Guy is garbage. Hey, and he I got another thing. <laughs> yeah, he does have his moments. I have another thing. The, the Vikings played the most one possession games. The Steelers are six one and one in one possession games. So that's looking pretty good. They win those tight games, and that's that's important right there. Yeah, I'm gonna go Steelers this week. I don't know why. I mean, their defense is still better than the Vikings, that's for sure. And I mean, I could just I feel the Steelers need a comeback, an actual like comeback game. Like last week, they got lucky. Ravens are a little banged up. Went for two upset w they need a good w because they're still in contention that team's still hot vikings always lose close games it's gonna be a close game either way go steelers too i hate to say it what about you Taj? uh you know i'm i'm riding the wave you know i'm going steelers too um <laughs> dude the vikings just lost to the lions uh, and then you know I mean, the Vikings do have a good pass rush, you know, they're second in sack, but I think with uh, Najee Harris, you know, if they can just give him the ball and find him some holes, you know, I think they're just going to attack him in the run because, um, you know, they're third in rushing touchdowns and the Vikings defense, they're, they are, they're, they're awful besides the second in sacks, they're 29th in rush yards. So they're just going to, I think Najee Harris is just going to eat up and, you know, I think it's going to be a close game. I don't think any offense is too fantastic right now, but um, I think it's Steelers by a few. Yeah, that's facts. I'm gonna have to finish the sweep off and go Steelers. Also, yeah, I hate to, I hate to see it. I hope I we hate... give them the curse. Yeah, yeah, I know. Sweeps are not good. Yeah, I love that. I I love it. I mean, a lot of pre- like predictions right now. ESPN got Minnesota 62 percent. Yeah, Vikings got exposed last week. Well, yeah, if you follow the trend, teams that covered versus teams that didn't cover, the Vikings fall right into that. And, I mean, mm, I staying that. away from that. <laughs> hate that. All right. Well, let's move on to staying in the division, but we're going to go to Sunday. Ravens at Browns. We got Browns as the minus two and a half favorites going into this game. I know they're at home, but, man, I, I don't think that's right. I don't think – I don't think that's right. <laughs> I'm a yeah, bad well, man. That that's pretty. If you got the Ravens plus right there, that's pretty. I mean, based on this game alone, Ravens destroy the Browns. I feel like every time they play each other, I I just remember last year. I mean, not this year. Ravens only won sixteen to ten in that ugly game. Um, that Lamar had like yeah, Lam- Lamar is he's like five that. and one versus yeah. Baker in his career, so he does own Baker basically. Oh, What's Baker coming off a bye? Do you know that stat? Because Browns are coming off a bye. Um, I don't know that stat, but the Ravens yeah. are ten and four against teams that come off a bye. So I might yeah, even with the will... Ravens injuries, the corners are all out. Baker still is hurt, and he plays like he's hurt every week. So yeah, I have to go to, Ravens. To go yeah, I'm going Taj. Ravens also. Yeah, go ahead, Taj. Oh yeah, I'm definitely going Ravens also. Like you said, um, you know. <laughs> Baker Mayfield, he's trying to play a tough guy right now, and he's playing through injuries, you know, and he he's just not playing too great. You know, they don't have a pass offense right now. Their, their rush is great, you know, arguably one of the best pass or uh, rush offenses in the league. But, 
you can't really win games with just running the ball. I know the Patriots just did to the Bills. Which yeah, but the good. weather conditions played a big role in that. <laughs> exactly. You know, you know that, that doesn't happen every week. You know, where the Browns, they're pretty one-dimensional. Um, the Ravens, they did lose to the Steelers, but, you know, it's a those are always close games between them, I feel like. And um, But the Ravens' offense is just too good. You know, if Lamar Jackson can – you know, get some time to make his passes and or just, you know, get outside of the tackles and make some runs, then, you know, the Ravens are just going to stomp on them, I think. Yeah, that's facts. I'm going Ravens also. Um, Ravens are pissed about last week letting the Steelers get off with that lucky one. Um, Devontae Freeman has been showing us uh, scenes from his old younger self. I mean, he's run the ball hard. He's a good decoy for Lamar Jackson, for Lamar to run. Um, He's a big for sure in that offense. Yeah. I don't know what happened in this Steelers game, but I think the Ravens won this one. He ran right into that steel curtain. That's what happened. (laughs) Yeah, I'm going to go Ravens as well, but I think Lamar got to play a little bit better. Um, He really doesn't, though. I mean, he doesn't, but he doesn't. He has games where he goes off, and he hasn't had one of those games in a while. I think – I'm just smelling a Lamar go off game. Like I think, you know, coming off their last game, he threw like three or four interceptions. I know he's 16 touchdowns to 13 interceptions ratio right now. That's wild. He's, that's terrible. <laughs> that's terrible. But I mean, he is a runner. He has a couple rushing touchdowns as well, but I'm going to go Ravens and I'm smelling a Lamar comeback game for sure. I think it's time. Two sweeps to start it off. Yeah, great, great games. Um, next game we got the two and ten Jags taking on the eight and four Titans. Tennessee opening up at minus eight and a half favorites. And yeah, that seems pretty pretty good. The I mean eight and a half versus Jags. I think that's I think that's where you put Tennessee. I think they win that game by more than eight and a half. Probably more than double. eight and a half. Uh, Lawrence is not having a really great rookie year. Not at all. I, I mean, I know the Jags <laughs> aren't set up for, like, contention at all, but he's got more interceptions than touchdowns right now. Yeah, and, I, I definitely thought he was going to be better, you know. He, had, he has good weapons at receiver, but, you know, he hasn't been throwing the ball great. Yeah, and their defense it's not the is game not changer that everyone put him out to be. Like the yeah. franchise changing, number one overall pick. And I mean, the media tends to do that to, to guys, but whatever. He's he's doing the best he can, I guess, in Jacksonville because they're really bad. Not many first overall pick quarterbacks tend to pan out very well. If <laughs> you look at some of the numbers, you got Baker, you got Jared Goff, Kyler. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Kyler's amazing. Kyler's amazing. <laughs> Kyler, Kyler is goaded. <laughs> first pick overall, though? Yeah, he was 1-1, one, one, and yeah, he was 1-7 one, one. in baseball. Oh, yeah, huh? 1-1, one, one. damn. I don't remember. <laughs> no, but <laughs> He's the, pretty good, though. I can't Jacksonville uh, is giving up tons of yards to running backs right now, and the Titans are have, – have, they, have, they don't have Derrick Henry, but they have three guys who can run just like Derrick Henry can, so – um, I'm going to expect a big day at the Titans here uh, in Tennessee. So they're going to have a, they're going to have a fun day down there. Knoxville. Yeah. yeah I'm going Titans also. Um, Jaguars defense is terrible. Their offense can't put more than 14 points up a game. I mean, I see no chance the Jaguars win this. What's no, the chances definitely. the Jaguars win? And then Urban Meyer goes to that bar after the game. <laughs> <laughs> Low key, like I would 60%. love it. Over under. <laughs> I, I would I would love for him to show face in this bar after this game. Winner lose. <laughs> um yeah, three sweeps in a row. That's not too good on our podcast. Holy smokes. Oh, 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 oh. I, mean, oh. yeah. I definitely I'm picking the Titans too, but um you know, yeah, the Jags, you know, they're on a four game losing streak. They're just a terrible all around team. Um Julio Jones is back. Yeah, I know he hasn't been too great when he has played, but you know I think it's about time. You know he's he scares all the time. scares defenses. So 
Right. He's he's definitely an intimidating receiver. Just seeing him out there, just even just running around. Um, there's no AJ Brown, so you know it's definitely going to be good for Julio Jones. Uh, and I and I think if McNichols is healthy, then it's definitely going to be even better for that offense. So Titans all the way by a lot. By a lot. Oh, yeah. By a lot. Jack's got the first or second over next year, actually, because of the Lions. Lions are winning. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, they're losing out. Winning streak, on I guess. One. <laughs> um. All right, let's go to a big divisional matchup. We got the Raiders six and six going on against the Chiefs in KC. Hey, Chiefs could lose in KC. They do it plenty of times. That's where they like to lose the most. Thanks. This is a hard, hard game. This is always. Always a great game. And Chiefs being minus nine and a half favorites, don't think that's getting covered. I don't think no. the Chiefs are covering that at all. This is always a close game. The Raiders and Chiefs go for shootout, go for blood. The um, Raiders just play up to whoever they're playing. They, nice. they beat the yeah. Cowboys <laughs> on Thanksgiving, and then they come out and duck far against the Washington football team. <laughs> Dude, and, lost to the Giants, lost to the Bears, like, like yeah, lost to some and bad football teams. The Chiefs are playing really good right now, so I honestly think this is gonna be uh wh- whoever gets the ball last type of game. Um, it may even be a shootout too. I don't know why, but the offenses overpower the defenses so much in these games. Um, but yeah. I have to go with the hotter team, and that's the Chiefs right here. In home, it's in hometown. I. Patrick Mahomes has been playing better, but he's still playing like shit, it feels like. He's not yeah. – he's definitely beatable, and it's like every Sunday we used to think, oh, this guy is God. He's Jesus walking on water on the football field, and now it's like, okay, he's human again. Yeah. I mean, he, he set the bar really high for himself. He did, yeah. <laughs> he did on purpose. Definitely did. <laughs> um, I'm – I'm I'm leaning towards Chiefs here too. I mean, the last time they played, they kind of smacked them. What was it, forty-one fourteen? I think. Yeah. In a game that yeah. I picked the Raiders. Yeah, I picked the Raiders last too. Um, I don't think I'm gonna let this game bite me in the ass like it did last time again. I'm gonna have to go Chiefs. I think, yeah, they're definitely the hotter team. But if worst comes to worst, I'm gonna take Patrick Mahomes with the ball in his hand. I mean, Derek Carr is having a great season. I cannot cap. I really wish they took CeeDee Lamb instead of Henry Ruggs. Um, oh, and who are you telling, team, bro? Who are you telling, bro? <laughs> would be way better off, bro. If they didn't have an NFL analyst in the GM spot, I think this Raider team would be good. They've missed on so many picks, and they're still a Dude. decent fucking football team. I think if you – Pair up Derek Carr with a good wide receiver. He's 10 times the more right. Yeah, maybe back oh, with the offseason. Yeah. Oh, that would that's be no scary. Scary, man. That would be scary. I mean, they that'd need that scary. type guy. That That's what the Raiders need. And I'm going to go Chiefs, but Derek Carr is playing great. And so I can't – I don't think that nine and a half gets covered at all. What do you think it's going to be? Uh, I'm going to take – the Chiefs also, they're out for bloodshed. Their defense hasn't let uh, a team score more than 12 points since week eight. Um, I think Darren Waller's still hurt, so that means only Hunter Renfro and Derek Carr. I mean, I don't see them doing too well. Hunter, against no, don't talk down on Hunter. He's great. Best <laughs> best white boy out right now yeah. since – <laughs> since who? Wes era. Welker? Wes Welker, yeah. <laughs> Julian Edelman days. <laughs> But I mean, yeah, Chiefs are out for bloodshed. Patrick Mahomes is, I don't know, he doesn't like the side, other side that he's been seeing lately. He went to the Super Bowl, went, to, got close the second year, and he's finally seen the other side of football and he's not liking it. So he's playing better, getting there. I think they win this game. It's crazy, though, also, when you watch the Chiefs actually play, when they have like primetime games. Feels like half his interceptions are literally clank balls off his receiver's hand. Yeah. Tyree Kill has like three interceptions that falls off his yeah. hand. Tyree like, Kill is just playing the, down this year. I don't, I don't know. I think it's, I thought it was defense just scheming against him, but he's been dropping balls and just getting exposed yeah. left and right. So I don't know what's up with him lately. 
They're throwing a blanket over them. Yeah, yeah I really think the Bucks exposed them in the Super Bowl, and teams just saw that all offseason, that one game on how to neutralize them, and yeah. that seems like it's worked. Like, earlier yeah. in the season, at least, now it's their defense is playing really, really good, so. Yeah. Right. I'm going to piggyback off that. Like, you know, if it, if it was the Chiefs in the beginning of the year, I would have picked Raiders. Yeah. Even though they're not playing too hot, but their defense woke up and they're playing really good football. Um, the Raiders missing Darren Waller, which is a huge part of the offense. You know, I know I, I'm really big on Foster Morrow, but, you know, he didn't show out like I'm sure anyone really hoped he did. Um, and, you know, but we do have Hunter Renfro, who's reliable, and I think the Raiders really do need the game. So I think it's going to be really close. You know, they're going to come down to the wire. Probably is like a who has the ball last uh, type game. Yeah. Or, you know, it's going to come down to like if someone missed a field goal. Um, but it is also in uh, Arrowhead, so that's a big advantage. Um, so I'm definitely going Chiefs by like, let's say three. I, I love that. Hey, and the Raiders the just paid their kicker, so could that. come could come up to a game winning kick to the guys got paid. That'd be sick. Right. True. Deservingly so. I like Carlson. I think he's actually a really good kicker. Yeah, he kickers is, are man. underrated when you watch a football game. You, so nice you, when you get a consistent. This kicker. time of the year, they start becoming more important. Got to need that fourth quarter save. You know. And all around in the, in the league, the kickers have been awful this year, I feel like. Awful. So awful. I feel like the past couple of years, man, last two or three years, nobody's been good. Since Adam Vinatieri, since he was young, I feel like those days, they had, there was like three or four kickers that were pretty solid. Nowadays, it's like hit or miss. Since they moved, the, since they moved the extra point back. Yeah, true. Very true. I, I have a couple of questions for you, Taj. I've been bringing these up a couple podcasts. One, I think kickers, when you're kicking a field goal, I think a doink should be worth one point. Only in field goal situations, not extra points because it's only a point. But if you hit the upright, I mean, if you make it, it's going for three. Why can't if I hit it, I get a point out of that? That's still hard enough hitting that <laughs> damn upright, and it doesn't happen a lot. You know, I, I hear you. I feel like there has to be like a limit though. You know, you got to be able to call your shot kind of like, you know, we're going to, we're gonna make, we're aiming to make this, but I'm going to throw my kind of like a red challenge flag. You get one of them and then, mm-hmm. you know, wanna, I'm going to throw my field goal flag or whatever right now. So if he hits this on this windy kick, we're going to get something out of it. But you know, if they do that all day, there's kickers who just keep missing. Just yeah. Can make a, you guys just keep racking up points. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I mean, that one ain't going to mean shit when you need three, you know, like. That's, yeah, know. that's facts. But um, my but what if you're down by one, and you're down by one, you tie game off a of yeah. Doink. But you're not aiming yeah. for a doink. Nobody He's wants to aim for nobody a wants, doink. Nobody wants a tie on a kick. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I also I saw this um on TikTok. Someone was talking about it. I think there should be another stat be kept in football where it's wide receiver interceptions, like we were talking about Tyree Kill or running back, like interceptions that you forced, like you didn't catch that ball, it bounced out of your hands. Like this weekend we saw Jamar Chase have a wide open 70 yard touchdown versus the Chargers and him bobble the ball and it turned into an interception right there, game changer. Right. I think that there should be a stat kept where yeah, quarterbacks have this many stats, like in baseball it's ERA and then there's earned runs. Like there's like runs that are errors basically that don't get charged to you. But in the scorebooks, you still give up the run. So, like, that's kind of how I feel like NFL should look at it is you throw an interception. Is it your fault or is it another player's fault? Oh, I, I definitely think uh, some receivers are reliable, man. They're, you, they're, there's some ball, like, you know, they, if it hits them in their hands, you know, depending on the situation, you know, it, it, it does get tough. But – Sometimes it's just hitting straight in the hands, and and it's make it goes towards the quarterback, and that's not fair at all, you know, because a lot of quarterbacks could have much better stats. Mm-hmm. If um like Pat Mahomes, since we just finished his stats, if um you know that that didn't count towards him because this year he's really getting exposed because his receivers have been dropping balls and he's trying to do these acrobatic passes and stuff, and the receivers haven't really been catching them like they used to be. And it's been going towards him. 
but um you know i definitely think that should definitely be a new stat yeah i i, I mean i think both of those are something yeah. NFL could incorporate here i mean if we're gonna keep that the kicker's sucking so bad i mean they might as well it should be it should be called points allowed yes and then you, allowed, every yeah. touchdown you get is you adds up on that so you like can't be like negative unless you're really that bad yeah yeah i mean i don't know all right let's get back on to the pickums we got saints at jets this game is gonna be god awful god awful there might be Two very eight bad teams. interceptions this game <laughs> eight? Oh. Is Taysom still starting, or are they back to Simeon? I think it's Taysom again. Why, bro? What faith do they have in that man? I hate it. They're paying them, man. They're paying them. I hate it. You got to do something. That's probably what it is. We're paying you this amount of money. You're going to play quarterback for us no matter what. And you (laughs) – basically what it is. I don't understand why they're paying him either. What has he done? Yeah. Why do we got to pay him that much? They just fuck with him because he's their salary cap holder. He, yeah, he can be the one they can fluctuate because they don't give a fuck about him. They're like, oh, yeah. you're, you're going to get, you want 80 million this year? All right, that's cool. And then next year, you'd be like, 10 million. He's like, what do I make? And he's like, you only make if you play. So you can just sit the bench. <laughs> I don't he understand how that works. So, I guarantee yeah. his, his uh, contract is like prorated for the percentage of snaps taken at certain positions. Yeah, yeah. probably. That makes sense. He's probably getting a bag then because he's playing quarterback so much. Well, every well, interception is minus like five G's. Somewhere. I don't understand really? his contract at all. <laughs> the only one in the NFL that has that, I don't understand. Yeah, but the Saints are on a five-game losing streak. Yeah, it's first time since Sean Payton era. Crazy. And they're going, and they're going to New York to play the Jets. Jets They're haven't played. Defense hasn't looked so good. Yes, I don't know who's gonna win. I, I wish the Jets had like a better quarterback. Yeah, so it, it, <laughs> it would lead me towards them a little bit more. I have no clue, though. This is the worst. Mike, Mike White's not starting this week. Who? I think Mike White. No, oh. it's been Zach Wilson the last. But then didn't oh, yeah. I can't remember. Oh yeah, not Zach not. Wilson played last week. Yeah, um, he had a rushing touchdown. Piss me off. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, Just you have not. both freaking Jets running backs. I feel like, yep, brutal. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I really don't know this game. I mean, these are two bad teams right now. Saints. I mean, I since Jameis has went down, this team has been very, very bad. Terrible. Uh, yes, but I've never. I've never s- yeah, and I've never seen the Saints lose six games in a row. So I have to go Saints here. <laughs> that's the only. That's my only logical reasoning behind picking the Saints is I've never seen them lose six games in a row. This six game has to be against Jets, who suck, and I've seen lose six times many a time. So I'm gonna go with Saints here. Trust and taste them, baby. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I really don't like this. Trust and taste them is a is a lot. It's heavy a risk. quote. It's, risky. it's a heavy quote. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you going, Roman? Let's hear you. I think I'm gonna have to go with Trevor here, just for the pick'em's sake. He's up on me a couple games, and we both die. If we lose this game, but no, I mean the J- Saints are definitely a better team than the Jets. I don't know what's going on with them. Taysom Hill is trash. Is Alvin Kamara still hurt? Questionable. So yeah. Questionable. I thought I saw him uh, practicing. I want to say. What about uh, Mark? Well, they lose their they lose their wide receiver to DUI. Who was that? What's that guy's name? Deontay Harris. Oh, yeah. 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 Suspension. Mm-hmm. That's not any good. Um, I'm gonna take the upset here. I'm gonna go Jets. Just for the hell of it, I hate this game. Either I way, Either and way. hopefully I could get a game on you guys. Um, right now it's saying Mark Ingram out. I don't know have any news. Mark Ingram out. Damn. Alvin Kamara. So I don't know. I mean, I'm just gonna go Jets just off of a hunch. I don't know. I don't like either team. I could care less about the game. I hope I don't watch the game. I hope it's not on freaking red zone either. <laughs> well, you're gonna see on red zone. 
No, I'm not. It's probably going to be zero zero. Both these teams are going to live in the red zone. It's going to be like forty to forty. Hope not. Dude, I hope. Not. I think the Jets are going to come out firing. Damn, I think we're splitting really it up. Wow. What's up? We're splitting it like two Saints, two Jets. Yeah, I'm going. Damn. I'm going Jets, dude. I, they, I think they're kind of you know they have their moments on offense. Their defense is uh you know they're pretty mediocre. But um, their offense, hopefully Zach Wilson could – if Elijah Moore is healthy, you know, he can find Elijah and uh, Jameson Crowder, um, you know, maybe get some dump-offs to their running backs. But uh, the Saints just haven't been playing good football, so I think it's really a good chance for the Jets to just kind of ruin things for the Saints and kind of call their season. I'm going Damn. Jets. I hate this game. You made them sound yeah. really good right there. I, I can't. I can't <laughs> believe the Saints were five and two at one point. This, yeah, that yeah, has to be the worst five and two team ever. <laughs> well, I mean, even in those games, they were winning, but Jameis was throwing like a hundred yards, like four touchdowns. Yeah. So I, I feel like this. This this team could be. I don't know, eight and four maybe if they had Jameis still. They and they and AK has been injured. Games. So, yeah, true. Yeah, if Slant Boyd was healthy too, haven't seen him all year. No, he doesn't he matter. He doesn't do nothing. He Might as well retire can, at this point. Yeah, he can Three stay years. with a broken ankle. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you feel? Yeah. That's how you feel? <laughs> <laughs> with fantasy. I felt the same way last year, bro. Thought he was going to be good. I'm pretty sure I took him wide receiver one, my like first round or second round or something like that last year, and he did the same shit for me. So I'm off the Michael. He Thomas. didn't even give Drew Brees a like a correct like goodbye. He just no. was hurt. He's like my ankle hurts still. <laughs> <laughs> Tape it up, buddy. Tape it up. <laughs> All right, we split that game. I'm hyped at that. Yeah, we got that's next scary. game. We got Cowboys taking on the Washington Football Team. Dallas minus four going into Washington. So, I mean, I'm sitting there too. I got Dallas in this game. I don't think Washington's that good. I know they just snuck a W. Four straight. Snuck two girl. W. Four W's right past me, I think. Right past you. <laughs> um, Yeah, because they beat the – ever since the Bucks, they've been on a good one. It's time for them to fall. Cowboys are going to take this game. Oh, um, well, it – it's time. It's not. It's not as easy as just Cowboys. You know, I I want to say yes, but Zeke has, Zeke has under fifty yards the last four games. He you when you see him run, he looks like he has a pulled hammy. He's literally oh, grabbing. He's grabbing his ass. He's like, oh, it hurts. <laughs> Tony Pollard again. is stepping up big time though. Yeah, you're right, but he's honestly, I don't know if Tony Pollard can be a three down back like Zeke is. You know, Tony Pollard's effective because he's in there once every three down. So I don't know if he's definitely the three down back right now but if, even if you sh- neutralize the run game they still have Dak they still have CD they still have Cedric Wilson even Amari Cooper like I would rather rely on those guys than Tyler Taylor Heineke Scary Terry like I'm gonna easily go Cowboys here just because Zeke could miraculously be healthy for once yeah I mean I've been on the trade Zeke hype train I think they paid him too much and used him too much too early. You know, running backs age quickly. They take so many hits. And Zeke was the brute of the offense for a long time. A so I've, I've been really on the brute hype train because he – Tony Pollard, I feel like, steps up every time they need him to. Even when Zeke goes down, I feel like Tony steps up. But I'm going to go Cowboys. I know this is a divisional game, and they're probably going to play ugly just because it's a divisional game. I'm going to play down to the Washington football team, and it's going to be a 19-20 game like usual. But I'm going to go Cowboys. Too many weapons. And Micah Parsons has been a stud wherever they put him on the football field. And Trayvon Diggs is still getting that ball. He's still intercepted. I don't care if he gives up a freaking touchdown or two. You create turnovers. You create turnovers. You win games, though. Turnovers turn to points, you know. I'm all right with him getting toasted every once in a while. Nine interceptions. You I would. Should, you, sh- you should honestly look and see how many points he's created off those turnovers, and then how many points he's given up on deep balls. I guarantee well, he's about even. He's, he's probably zero. Maybe even. <laughs> but 
I don't know. He's definitely electric though. Those he gets big time picks and he and he dropped a few too. So he's he's one of those guys that's always around the ball, and those, you you can't teach that really. Those are his instincts. Yeah, but the, a good amount of his picks have been like quarterback errors, man. They've been underthrowing or underthrowing. He's just oh, really in the perfect spot. Yeah. Like, and they're just right in his hands. But I, I'm I can't, you know. Um, you know, not give him his credit. You know, he's played very well. He does get cooked a few times a game, though. But what corner isn't? Yeah, um, that's for sure. Um, but uh, I'm also, you know, I'm going Cowboys. They're they're finally playing better, you know. But they're making games tight. You know, I don't I don't think the Raiders' loss is anything really. Um, it was a big moment for uh, you know, or a big stage, and. Um, but I think this uh, divisional matchup, Cowboys first in the East and uh, Washington second, I think the Cowboys can't lose this game. And with the Washington football team only being able to run the ball, um, I don't think they're going to be able to really, you know, get through that defense. Because like, like you said, you got Trey, you're going to have digs on uh, Terry McLaurin. So it's going to be tough to even try to get the ball out. Logan Thomas is out for the rest of the season. Mm-hmm. Um, so, the, and, you know, Antonio Gibson has been running the ball really well. So they're going to try to focus on the run. So unless he, unless he goes, I don't see any way that they beat the Cowboys. Yeah. And they got D law, D law played last week. So they got Parsons and D law on each side of the ball on, on the ends right there. I think that's nasty. Yeah. On the on the subject of Parsons, man, that's who I wanted the Raiders to draft first round this year. And we went nasty. with Leatherwood. Leatherwood. <laughs> and he, we don't even know what position he is right now, man. He, he's like I, I think he's a hybrid we, lineman. We, that's literally what he is. He's like you know, whenever we need, we're just gonna throw him in there because he's not terrible. He's just not great. But like that was what, the wildest we, pick. And I think my like NFL draft memory in recent years because didn't he have every, a bad year at Alabama? Like he was trending down, right? Everyone had him as like a yeah. late second, early third round draft pick. Like he was gonna fall. Gruden and then they he take something. he goes first round, and then their second round pick fell from the first round. So honestly, like it was kind of like it's a not too bad. it wasn't too bad. It was like you got a second round pick, first round, first round pick, second round wasn't terrible but it definitely wasn't the guys who i think they needed that early offensive lineman when there were so many guys on the board so many people like and our defense is just weak like i'm i'm proud of how the defense is playing this year they're doing a lot better even the secondary is still pretty trash um, uh denzel perryman what he a is, uh, who Dude, he is was that? nasty on the chargers come on now bro no, he was not lead the league in tackles, nasty. Yeah, but he was Dude. put a helmet on your ass, nasty. Yeah, he, he he's always, on every always been that guy. Always been he's short put too. your shoulder I've pads on. He's let's short. Work. He's not a tall dude. Yeah, oh, he no, he's definitely wood, not a tall dude. Yeah, he yes, brings he the wood, does. facts. That was such a good pickup. You guys traded for him at the end of preseason, I'm pretty sure. He was going to get released. Yeah. And then yeah. he goes right to his defensive coordinator, goes and starts and – Leads the league in tackles right there. Killing right it. He's everywhere, man. Yeah, wow, but I'm going amazing. Cowboys also. Yeah. Um, this Jeez. defense is the best defense this team will see since their streak started. Um, Logan Thomas being out hurts this team a lot. They have no more scare on the wide receiver passing threat. Um, I'm going Cowboys. Yeah, four out of the last five Cowboy games are divisional games, and this is the first time they're facing Washington this year. Going to face them in two more weeks. That's scary right there because Washington's staying in playoffs right now. They're seventh seed, I'm pretty sure. This is a must-win must game game for both these teams. It's going to be a good one. Yeah, great game. They're a great game. All right, let's keep going. We got Atlanta Falcons visiting the Panthers. Carolina Panthers, Carolina opening up minus two and a half favorites. Yikes. Another ugly game. Is, is, Cam, Cam, Newton, is Cam Newton starting? <laughs> we'll ask know. that question. Probably, right? I mean, they brought him there for a reason, you know. He's going to bring the hype and he's going to bring the fans. 
but uh, you know he I was don't... so bad last week. Oh my god. Those are the type of games Cam Newton always brings, though. He'll bring you so much energy, and then once you're down and out, it's over. He threw, like, four picks, wasn't he? He did that for a whole year, (laughs) Roman. He He gave all Carolina hope. He gave them so much hope this year. So much (laughs) hope. And for him to just go out and throw four picks and get pulled in the fourth quarter like that, it's just – I can't go – I can't go Panthers here. I can't he, do he it. He juked the world out. He, he juked did. the world out because the first game back, he went and he played like four plays and had two touchdowns. Yes, and two like, rushing touchdowns. He said, I'm back. Yeah. Got the whole – he was clout chasing, bro. Get out of here. I'm going Falcons. I don't know why. <laughs> I just – I don't know. Can't go Panthers. CMC hurt. No chance. I'm you don't go. like Chuba? I'm going to go. like Chuba. Yeah, so I like I like bad. Chuba. I like Chuba, but he's not no CMC. He is. Yeah, you're right. Nah. Pretty good, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going Carolina here. I think they got a much better defense overall. They have a much better defense than the Falcons. And week in, week out, I don't know who the Falcons are going to bring to the plate. No Calvin Ridley, no Julio Jones anymore. I know we got Cordell, and he's good for a touchdown, anytime touchdown. Kyle Pitts is putting up a great rookie season, but we don't got much room to wiggle over there for the Falcons. And it's going to be a good game. If Cam plays, I'm, I mean, I'm excited for that game because I'm one of those hype beasts. I was a little kid at heart when Cam Newton came out and back in Panthers, you know, it reminds you of just like old times. And so I'm going to go Carolina. I think they're a better overall team. Um, and I just don't have no hope in the Falcons ever. <laughs> yeah, well, that's weird because Matt Ryan has his most career wins, 17 against the Panthers. So Matt Ryan tends to do good against the Panthers, but Matt Ryan's Falcons are not Matt Ryan's Falcons, and the Panthers are not the same old Panthers as they used to be. I like the Panthers here in a Cam Newton weird comeback game. This game's in Carolina. Um, might as well win, you know. There's no reason to lose, so – might as well win. Easy as that. <laughs> yeah. The last two yeah. times these teams faced off, Carolina won 19 to 13. Sam Donald only had 130 yards passing, and Chuba had 82 yards and a touchdown rushing. That's all they Too needed close. to do was that was to close. Win that time. Too close. Falcons switch it up. <laughs> okay. Yeah. See, uh, I'm I'm gonna go Panthers. Also, the Falcons. Island boy. They're they're too wishy washy, man. They're they're pretty solid. Like I thought they were gonna be a solid offense, but you know Calvin Ridley leaving really really messed. I think up. that made it harder on Cal Pitts, you know, because he began he became like the really number one receiver. He's a huge target. He doesn't he rarely drops the ball, you know. Um, and they have no run game, you know. Cardo Cordo Patterson was the run game for a little bit, but. He can't stay there, you know. They have to have him out of receiver, or they're not going to be able to pass the ball. Yeah, um, he can't run. Mike Davis sucks yeah. too. Mike Davis old. Hey, you see, uh, you see Mike Davis last week, a little little nice little run. He looked new, like, <laughs> like a rookie. Is this a Mike Davis revenge week? Are we just yeah, totally overlooking he's, that. He's tired of the media. <laughs> he's, he's tired, tired of the media. Of the media. <laughs> he's gonna he's gonna shock the world. He's gonna earn his contract. Just wait. <laughs> Nah, but I'm definitely going Panthers, you know. I just think I think they're going to have Cam settle down, try not to force the ball, you know, just – and try to focus on the run because yeah. Atlanta's they're, – they're like – they're 15th in the run, but um, Panthers, they're 10th in rush, uh, rushing touchdowns. I think they're really going to try to rely on, you know, maybe even put some option in it for Cam and, um, you know, hopefully get Truba some red zone touches. So I'm going yes. Panthers. I like and, this island. I like and it. Cam is still one of the very best at getting one to two yards. Oh yeah, he he just when he falls forward, it's two he's yards. just a lengthy he's guy. His hair gets an extra oh. yard. No, he's like two fifty. Yeah. Six five, two fifty. <laughs> he's hard to tackle. I mean, and he wears that big, big old body. fucking stomach plate <laughs> thing. Like, yeah. yeah. Thick boy. And he runs a four five. Jeez. <laughs> That's a tr- crazy. Unbelievable athlete. All right, let's move on. We got the 
trash Seahawks now. Dead Seahawks. Four and eight Seahawks taking on the two and ten Texans. Another ugly game. Why we got such good games and then they just throw in a couple clunkers here and there. (laughs) Oh, don't forget about these guys. Yeah, Yeah. Davis Davis General Mills, he's playing, I think. Yeah, no Tyrod. I'm pretty sure I heard that too. Oh my god. Why? Why do they even have this game? They should put Geno Smith out there then. Like what? Um, Russ is about done in Seattle, anyways. This is his last few games remaining in Seattle are coming up quick. Yeah, I he think rather sit this game so he doesn't pull an ACL or something. Tear an ACL. The I bird's cooked. Bird is cooked. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> but I'm not gonna go Texans. That's for sure. I'm gonna go Seahawks. Russ. I mean, media is reporting now that there's a couple teams he has his eye on. Well, go go show out a little bit. Go yeah. end your days with the Seahawks. I think this could, this is the last hurrah. You know, you got this terrible Texas um, – Houston Texans team. General Davis Mills, are you kidding me? That guy's also garbage. Two teams that have – the rest, nothing to look forward to the rest of the season. So who knows how yeah. they'll play? But both well, these teams are down and out. Better overall team. I mean, we have no no blitz boy. Jamal Adams is out for the year. That's big. Uh, is for it the, though? Uh, not not as far as the season, like like rankings and everything. But for the Seahawks defense, you know they're they're already pretty bad, and now you take away their pretty much their their. Leading tackler, probably, um, you know, it's going to definitely going to be noticed. Yeah, um, he's definitely not lived up to what they gave up for him. I can tell you that because their top five pick is not theirs this year. Um, but I'm still going to go Seahawks. I think that it's a better overall team. I have n- no interest in Texans at all. Yeah, yeah I'm going I Seahawks, like Seahawks also. I like the Seahawks here just because they they uh, added AP. He's he's running the ball, so they're they're automatically gonna win. <laughs> he's back. Yeah. He might have a hundred yards rushing this game. We don't know. Yeah, because how bad uh, Texans rush defense is. They're yeah. always like one of the worst. Probably thirty first, thirty second in the league right now. Yeah, but I wonder if Russ's uh, fingers still broken and he came back too early, and now he's like regretting that he came back. Nah, this game is a contract booster, like Bob said. Yeah, he's out to find a contract. Um, he only has a couple games left. These both these teams have no hope. They run AP a little bit the first quarter, and he throws two bombs to t- uh tie Lockett to. Yeah, I can't have that happen. Yeah, it's gonna happen. I'm no, telling you, contract booster. DK. DK, no, please, not, not DK. Tyler Lockett. No, you already know their their relationship is broken already. If you haven't sell, uh, seen it. Yeah, we told it's you going last to week, it. Trevor. We, it's going to lock DK's, it. DK's listening to Future in the locker room, and yes. Russ is ticked off. Dirty soda spike, Lee White girl, iced tea. That's yeah. fine then. I'm gonna I'm gonna send Russ a message and let him know DK <laughs> is his guy this week. Um, Just because your fantasy team don't mean bullshit. No, I'm facing him this week. I'm a win or go home. It's a situation in fantasy. I, I win, it. I make You're the playoffs. Home. I lose, I'm going home. You're going hey, home. Me too, man. I'm right there. <laughs> And I'm facing Russ and Tyler Lockett, so that's not happening. You're going home, Russ, Ty Lockett. Two, <laughs> two long balls, I'm telling you. Contract booster. I can't wait because th- I haven't seen it in a while, and it's going to it's gonna come. It's just it's it's going to be gonna electric. Come. Electric. I it's can definitely pick. see this game being uh, 10-9, 10-7. No. no. Yeah. I, th- I think the Seahawks are going to, you know – they're actually going to wake up a little bit. They've been really awful on offense, especially without Russell. And it is, you know, who knows? He might have come back a little too early with his finger. But I agree with the, the other two of you. You know, this is a contract game. You know, who? what other team is better to do it against than the Texans? They're one of the worst in the leagues also. So, you know, I think Russ is going to – I think the Seahawks are going to pound the ball a little bit with AP and even get Rashad Penny some looks. But uh, I think it's going to be a big day for DK. And um, I think Tyler Lockett's going to get a lot of touches too. But I think DK is because, you know, everyone has noticed DK has not been getting looked at recently. 
Hell no. Like, he, it seems like he's not even there. Like, who has DK Metcalf on their team and doesn't give him 10 targets? Like, that fool's ridiculous. And, you know, he, he hasn't been utilized. So I think, you know, they're like, look, dude, it's the Texans. Uh, we got to look good today. And I think they're going to put up at least 25 on these fools. Yeah, I agree. I mean, they put up 30 on the 49ers last week. 49ers are a much yeah. better team. Much better much, team. Much better, yeah. So I'm... Hopefully. Hopefully they are. We don't know yet. <laughs> All right, let's get into another bad game this week. we got the one ten and one Detroit Lions. Congratulations winning your first game last week. Taking mm-hmm. on the six and six Denver Broncos in mile high. Sorry, Brown. Or sorry, Lions. Brown. Yeah, I don't know why that gets Browns are one in ten and one too. I agree. <laughs> it feels like it. It feels like it, how much hate they get. But yeah, sorry. Like, it ain't happening again. I think the Broncos are another one of those teams that played a competition. Um and so it's gonna be an ugly game. I think this is gonna be ugly. Both sides. Uh Lions play up to competitions, Broncos play down. So this it's is gonna doing be- the Lions dirty right now. This is – I'm going Broncos. You can go ahead and take the Lions. Go ahead. No, the Lions The Lions haven't won back-to-back games since week six and seven of last year. That's a, like 20 weeks ago. That's a long time. So uh, I'm going to go Broncos here. It's the second-best team in their division. So uh, I got to I gotta go with the, the mile-high team. Yeah, I'm going Denver second also. They're 3-1 and one versus NFC teams this season. Three and five versus AFC teams. Um, I'm going there. And Javante Williams is actually clicking. He's a dog. Yeah. Dog. That's, that's the reason I'm going Broncos also. You know, their pass game hasn't been too hot, but uh, their run game has been pretty reliable, even though Melvin Gordon uh, went down. Javante Williams, the rookie, has really filled his role and probably even, you know, uh, exceeded expectations. Um, he's getting used in the past game, which has probably bailed the Broncos out a lot. Um, but the, you know, the Lions, I know they got their win last week, but. That's it. That's all they got. They're, yeah, they're still <laughs> awful, man. You, you have no DeAndre Swift, Jared Goff, you know, he, you, you have to give him the game if you're going to lose to him right now. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going Broncos. It's going to be an easy game. The Broncos don't win this game, I swear. Bro. What's the spread? <laughs> uh, they got the Broncos. Probably Broncos minus eight and a half. Eight, eight and, and a half, half sounds yeah. right. Eight and a half. Broncos yeah. minus eight and a half. Yeah, I say that's about right. Broncos don't score too many points. Eight and a half seems about right. Seems gonna be a quick one though. Yeah. Oh yeah, quick one. Ground and pound, whole time. And the lights out yeah. of all. All right, let's go, Giants. Four and eight, taking on the seven and five Chargers. Chargers opening up minus ten point favorites, and this I think this is going to be an ugly game now. No Keenan, no Mike Will. We got Jalen Guyton out there as wide receiver one as of right now. Eckler is questionable. Eckler always dealing with injuries. It's going to be ugly you know, for sure. Well, I'm gonna put my money with the kid, bro, Justin Herbert. This kid. Week in, week out is unreal. His numbers this year are unreal. And it seemed like last year when he needed to get it done, it didn't matter who was on the field. That ball is going to be in the perfect spot. And so I think Justin, with those young kids, no-name kids, Guy Ann and others, um, it's going to have to be – it's going to have to be the Justin Herbert show. That's all I got to say about it. I mean, I don't think the Giants are that good – um, Daniel Jones hurt. Mike Glennon is dealing with injuries. It's going to be game time for him. Might be Jake Fromm starting this game in his first NFL start. That'll be fun to watch. I I like Jake Fromm in his one good season and uh, at Georgia. At Georgia. Yeah, after he QB was on QB one. QB1. Yeah, he was on QB one. That was pretty fire he show. Had a good year there. Yeah, he did. Those stats don't matter though. <laughs> No, I'm definitely going Chargers also. I went Giants last week, and it beat me in the ass. Um, this is Justin Herbert's uh, MVP race. 
game right here. He answers all those questions, puts the ball in the right places, like Bob said. Um, I got Chargers here winning by at least a touchdown. What's the spread? Ten and a half? Uh, I don't know about that, but touchdown seems about right. Yeah, see, uh, I'm going Chargers, but I, I agree with Bob. I think it's going to be an ugly game. Um, I think it's going to be big to see how Justin Herbert adapts to not having weapons, you know. I'm not saying Guyton's not a good receiver because he is, and he he does show up in big moments. But, you know, you can't just throw to him every the whole entire game. You do have Eckler to check it down to if he's healthy. And um, I don't think Jared Cook's healthy, huh? Yeah, so, Yeah. So, um, <laughs> yeah, so, you know, uh, I think it's definitely going to be all on Herbert and, and if uh, but I think it's going to be close because the Chargers run defense is is really bad. And I think it's about time Saquon yep. finally did something, you know, because since he returned from injury, he's been pretty quiet and I don't. You run scared don't. now, if anybody has noticed. That fool does not hit the gaps the same, won't lower his shoulder. I mean, he's just hopping around he, behind his O-line until he finds a hole, and he usually gets stuff, like, right away. Not like yeah, the gameplay. I, I definitely uh, – I think he's partly running scared and partly, like, his O-line just isn't too yeah. great either. Like, he – I think that's the reason, you know. He's like, this. that's the reason why I got injured, man. Like, I'm over here taking all these blows. And Facts. I'm trying to – like, how about you guys create a hole so I can hit it and go one, one-on-one one with a linebacker instead of getting rolled up on by all these big old defensive linemen and no linemen. Um, but I, I think Saquon's going to have a good game. I think they're going to get him um, uh, off tackle. You know, I think I don't think they're going to try to rush him too much inside. And I think a different quarterback is going to be better because uh, for the Giants because, you know, it's going to get the other receivers involved. I feel like, you know, if you have Daniel Jones there the whole season, he's probably in love with uh, his one receiver, even though he's not getting any of them the ball very well. Yeah. But, um, you know, I think Holiday is finally going to get a couple targets and Saquon's, you know, going to have a better game than he has had recently. So, but I'm still going Chargers by three. Love that. Yeah. Um, Take the I, iron. I could – I could if I really wanted to, but uh, Do it. You really there's want just to. there's just conflicting stats that I have going on right now, and one of them will sway my decision longer uh, or more than the other one. And uh, Chargers are the only team to allow 26 points per game and score 26 points per game. So yes, they are giving up a lot of points, but they're scoring a lot of points. And uh, the Chargers, the Giants game plan for this week literally runs right into exactly how the Chargers game like weaknesses are. The Chargers can't defend the run and if you have no Daniel Jones, no Mike Lennon and you're relying on your third string, you got Saquon. I'm giving him the ball twenty five times and seeing what he can do. Doesn't really matter. The Chargers literally could try and stop him. Like it's gonna be hard. Even if if that's their game plan, it's gonna be hard. But the the Chargers or the Giants haven't beat the Chargers since nineteen ninety eight. And that is what is really sticking out, lingering to me. The Chargers just somehow own the Giants after what uh, Eli Manning did to them way back when. Chargers they, they played just, down to their. There's a curse. It's an Eli Manning teams, curse, though. apparently. But this <laughs> game's going to be a lot closer than like 10 points. This is going to be three game, three point game. Like, whether you guys like it or not, I'm picking the Chargers, but it's um, this is going to be a super close game. And nice. this is Thanks. first time in average takes history. I picked the Chargers back to back weeks. Love it. I think last, last week, Saquon, oh yeah. Last week Saquon only had eleven touches, but you know, he had fifty five yards. He's, yeah, they he's need that, to feed him. Just feed yeah, him. Like, See what him he can do. Just keep giving that's what I noticed is like I think they're also playing scared. They they're afraid they start giving him his workload. And it's Saquon yeah. Barkley, man. You need to feed him. He's not going to just – you can't give him the ball 10 times a game and expect him to just have 10, 20-plus yard runs or something, bro. You got to give him 20, 20 touches so he can bust that 70-yard run that you're looking for. Yeah, get a when, couple he was at, runs. when he was at Penn State, that's how all it was. They were giving him the ball, and Penn State was elite. But yeah. teams have yeah. that have schemed the only run game against us, we beat. Bengals only run game. I mean, they have Jamar Chase, but we shut him down. 
Well, we didn't shut him down, actually. He did pretty good, but we shut Joe Mixon down, and we won. The Steelers, we shut Najee down. We won. Yeah, that, I, mean, I was going to mention that. Those are really like when the, when Yeah, when yeah. teams plan to run against us and we know it, we tend to do well against it. You didn't so. shut down the Browns, though. Like, you won that game, but you didn't shut them down. We can't shut them all down, but I mean, I'm just saying we do. Was... We've done pretty well against teams that have schemed only run against us. Yeah, and this game, honestly, I'd probably pick the Giants if Daniel Jones was playing, but he's not yeah. playing, so I I can't pick. Them. So, I mean, yeah, I, I have to rely on Saquon, is... and Saquon hasn't doesn't even have a hundred yard rushing game this year, so it's super hard. The, the Chargers last couple of weeks they've schemed run better. Like yeah. I mean that. Let's. Not, I'm not saying they're the fucking best. We're there. making them earn it inside. Yeah. We're not letting them run it off the tackle anymore. Getting those big yards. Mm-hmm. They have to it's get inside the guards. Huge yeah. Runs anymore. Like. I mean, there's teams are still doing it. They'll still break a ten yard run through the guards. I mean, I don't know how, but we're yeah, okay. diminishing it by the week weekly. But also, this is going to be one of the very first times you guys rely fully on Justin Herbert to win you a football game. That's true. And, he like I like him a lot but he's can be erratic and wild like random times you're like what the fuck are you doing bro like literally random so hopefully this week doesn't happen but some sometimes during the game he like the sun's in his eyes and he fucking can't throw it to anyone it's all right hey, we all fall asleep once or twice <laughs> um all right let's move on we all swept the chargers on that one love that yeah. Next game, we got 49ers, the 6-6 six and six 49ers taking on the Bengals, 7-5 Bengals. 49ers are minus one. Good. Favorites. Good. The they change, should be more. Changed since the last time I looked at it. It was minus one and a half, but now um, 49ers in minus one. And I like that because I'm going to go Cincinnati here. Every time, <laughs> every time – I pick the 49ers. It seems like they lose. I pick against them. They win. Whatever. I'm <laughs> off the four. They're dead to me. But I just think that Cincinnati team is better. Um, I think Cincinnati is way better than the 49ers. And um, I think Mixon's going to have to step it up. I don't think he had a great game last week. And I know that they were down, down early. So they weren't able to run him like they like to in this offense. But I think Joe Mixon's going to have a big game and the Bengals are going to beat the 49ers. I don't like the 49ers. And I know I'm pretty sure Debo hasn't practiced all week. So I'm not too sure about him, but. Got Eliza Mitchell. I got Burrow and the Bengals. I feel like. The same thing happens to me. Uh, I pick the Bengals and they lose. I pick against them and they win. And I'm going to try again, I guess. I'm going to go 49ers here. They lost a bat- to a bad Seahawks team last week. But, I mean, the Bengals got crushed. Soul-crushing loss against Chargers last week. I mean, it's hard to come back from those type of games. Seven and five is the best they could have been this season with how their team is built. Um, 49ers I don't know how Jimmy G does it but I think he pulls it off yeah um, I like that Roman I do I think the Bengals are not that good if I'm being honest I think they're yeah. not that good they're not that good and this Charger the Charger game last week was their proving point and for them to just miss it by three points anyone really have a weather, a weather check Weather, do we have a weather check? Weather, I need oh. a weather check in Cincy. We've 47 and sunny. Ooh, that's going to be football great. Weather. Great football chilly. weather. Perfect. Sounds like 49er dub to me. Uh, Cincinnati, like I was saying, they suck. And all time, uh, San Francisco's 12 and 4 versus the Bengals. So, all time. Like that uh, like yeah, that's that. 49ers just own the Bengals. I, I don't like either of these teams that much, but I think the Bengals, I think they need to bounce back. Last week was pretty Can, we, can you give us a growl? A, a growl? No. What about you, Taj? Who you got? 
I honestly, I've been a fan of the Bengals this year. Uh, I, I like the Bengals in this game too. Um, you know, their defense has been playing solid. Their offense, they have a lot of weapons everywhere. You have Joe Mixon, um, you know, and they're all the receivers and Chase and haven't been getting Boyd too many touches, but, you know, they're all getting involved. And the 49ers, you know, they're, they're all right, man. But I just think Joe Burrow, he's, he's going to take the Bengals, you know, and probably a must win game for them because, you know, they're trying to, they're still trying to claim that playoff spot. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I, I think it's going to be a somewhat high scoring game. But I think since the Bengals, you know, they're top, they're top three in sacks this year, I think they're going to get after the quarterback and make it hard for them to get uh, the receivers the ball. So I go, I got Bengals. Yeah, Bengals. Love it. Love it. Game. Love it. Love Jamar it. Chase is only 40 yards away from a 1,000-yard season. We're only entering week 14. Yeah. He, I say he gets yeah, 38. <laughs> 38 and three cutties. Josh Norman shut down. Get him on Norman Island. <laughs> Josh Norman? Who? Are we talking 2015? <laughs> oh, he's back. You haven't heard? It don't matter. He ain't good no more. Oh, he's back. No. He's back. He's back. That's like saying Richard Sherman's back. He's back. No, back he's in hurt. a uniform. Don't be hurt. Back. <laughs> Anything good. All right, let's move on. We got, I think, what could be the game of the weekend. This has to be the game of the weekend. Uh, and I mean, Aaron Rodgers needs to be Mike cool. Duff. Monday night's not the weekend, obviously. Um, I would love for this game, everyone mic'd up. No, just Aaron Rodgers. I want to hear how many oh, times he says, I own game. you. You're, you're skipping a game. game. You're skipping a game. Oh, I am? I'm thinking Bill's Bucks game yeah. of the weekend, not for sure. Packers. Ship, ship. ship. <laughs> I think Bill's Bucks has to be game of the weekend. Yeah, that's what Even I was thinking. That 125, too. this is a great game. I don't think both of these teams are at their levels that they want to be playing at yet. And I think that it's going to take a big win versus a good team. And if either of these teams win, this is a big win because you are beating a good team. God, this is scary. Scary game right here. I, mean, I can't. I can't see the Bills being seven and six. I really can't. And I honestly believe they're going to be seven and six. I, like, yeah. I think the I think the Bucks are going to beat them. And before the season, seven and six Bills. Yeah, right. I wouldn't have said it either. God, this is. I, I have them as uh, Super Bowl favorites. Bills, yeah. Wouldn't have been. Nobody would have yeah, called you crazy got... with that. I mean, Tom Brady's playing MVP level right now. He is the MVP in this league. Right? Hey, funny this. thing, the Bills are going to go from 70 mile per hour winds and snowing to 80 mile, 80 degrees and humid in Florida this Sunday. Oh, <laughs> that's shitty. Well, Someone's going to end up with a cold. Yeah, definitely. That's uh, how that happens. You go from gonna, snow gonna beat to Josh out. Yeah, I hate that. Um, I want to hear what you guys had to say about this game because I don't mind taking an island in this week. If... I, I I don't I'm not, I haven't been a fan of the Bills recently. They haven't been playing good ball. Um, I I really don't know what it is exactly, but they just you know they've haven't been the same as they they start off really hot and now they're just losing games, and the Bucks have just been playing fantastic. Their their run games there when they need it to be, and Tom Brady's finding his receivers like usual. So, you know, it's it's going to be hard for the Bills, you know. I don't I don't think they've been playing the same type of football that they they could. So, I think it's it's going to be easy for the Bucks to kind of just, you know, kind of just take the game at their pace, you know, let them control the game and, you know, let their defense just completely overwhelm Josh Allen. And Yeah, I'm going to have to agree with you, bro. I'm going Buccaneers here also. Uh, Gronk just seems to find his way off the radar and back on the radar. I feel like teams stop scheming for him because Tom doesn't throw to him. And that's when Tom just gives him three touchdowns for 80 yards. I mean, I don't understand it, but Tom Brady's the GOAT. 
Um, this Buccaneers team is looking hot, nine and three, Super Bowl contenders. Um, this is probably Shenny's stat, but I'm taking it. Tom Brady's 32 and three career record versus Buffalo. That's the most versus like any QB versus a single opponent. Oh, mine's so, better, actually. I mean, yeah, Tom Brady knows how to beat the Bills, and he does it yeah, this week. He does, and uh, the last time he lost to the Bills was uh, week 17 in 2014. Um, he didn't really need to play that game but since then tom brady has won four super bowls three super bowl mvps and one nfl mvp um he's got a whole nother career whole nother career yeah whole nother accolades just last time he uh, beat the bills so or the last time the bills beat him and i think that continues i don't know why but the bills have just not nothing's clicking for them i know last week was just a weird fluke not really fluke but like weather that that doesn't happen you can't there's never games where you can't throw the ball, like literally throw the football. So I mean, you couldn't. You literally couldn't. So maybe the uh, the 80 degrees and uh, humid weather opens up the passing lanes, but that's the only way they can beat them is if Spawn Diggs has 200 yards and Josh Allen has 400 yards, four tutties. Um, that's very hard to ask. So I'm gonna go Bucks here, but I hope Josh Allen has a uh, good day need a comeback day from him um i'm gonna take this island i don't think the bills are that great of a team but the football guys need to bless them and this is a must win game like you said seven and six bills who would have thought definitely not me i'm gonna go bills bucks sometimes just lose a game here and there like first football team i'm a betting man and the odds in this situation me to get a game Hey, I took the Bengals last week. Didn't work out for me. Maybe the football gods will help me too. And yeah, then, maybe. I definitely I'm gonna give you the, the same Island, I mean, the, Island the, boy. The Bucks, the Bucks don't need to win, so Bucks maybe you don't need snuck to win. one on us. Maybe you snuck one on us. Nice. That's no. what I'm. That's what I'm. Just football gods. They killed them last week in that horrible weather. We need a. We need a good game from them. Well, let's get on to Shenny's game of the weekend. We got Bills yeah. versus Packers. <laughs> Sunday night. Can't wait for it. I mean, Can't wait for that. <laughs> I haven't heard anyone this year say they're excited to watch the Bears. Wow. I'm I'm hype. Can't Field wait. is back. <laughs> Field is back. Aaron's toes okay. Devontae's back. Darnell Mooney's back. Man. And Bears Packers is usually a good game. Is Khalil Mack back? It's good. I don't think. <laughs> I don't think so. It's good because it's a division game and Aaron Rodgers owns them. That's why it's always good. Yeah, it's a division last game and time, the Bears always try to put up competition. Up. He needs to be mic'd up. He has to be mic'd up. I mean, last time we got the clip of him saying, I own you. I fucking own you. Like, I just, yeah. I loved it. And I can go on Packers by a million. I don't by think, a million. I don't think they got any shot. A Rod is cruising right now, and, and so are the Packers. One of the top teams in football, and the Bears are bad overall. Justin Fields can't throw a football right now. Get McNaggy out of the NFL. Doesn't deserve a head coaching job, and neither their GM. I mean, either of them. Get them both out. Start fresh. Get that young kid. They need Mike Ditka back. <laughs> oh. <laughs> get, get this kid a young college coach and let's go crazy with this offense let's bring a college style offense to the nfl that's what i think yeah they should hire Maybe brian Erlacher. not mad at that brian Erlacher. i'm going packers <laughs> also though not really much else to say about that at all no. a rod's a goat i'm going packers by minus minute. 12 and a half though they cover it Yes. Oh, yep. They win by twenty. Hundred percent. They win by twenty. Discount double check <laughs> I, all over the Bears. I was kidding. I didn't even need you guys to answer that. Oh, okay. I think the. I don't know. I think the Bears are bad football team. They have good pieces though. David Montgomery is a Ducks. stud. David Montgomery is a stud. Shane you know their defense. They got uh, Danny Trevathan. Uh, they have a. They have a couple good like interior guys. Clem Max hurt, but they have a good good pieces. I think a coach could come Robert in Quinn. And especially if Aaron leaves this division. Which he will. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> if Aaron Rodgers is a true man, he'll listen to me and retire. No, Walk he, away. Stun the whole NFL just he like can't. 
he literally can't. Every quarterback Why? ahead of him has gone to a different team. With Brett Favre, his his guy, his who he learned. He behind, didn't like Brett Favre. Didn't Peyton like Peyton Brett Manning. Peyton Manning went to a different team. Tom Brady. Oh, the only three guys that are ahead of him in legacy are all on different teams. Did they won a championship on a different team? He's on his he own path. He has to go to a different team and win a championship, and he's going Doesn't to have to. You win two. His own path as a Green Bay Packer. Kick rocks. His own path to success. Cheesehead for life. Retires happily with owning the Bears. Yes. I think he stuns the NFL. He's the he's one of the biggest weirdos I've ever met. Or not <laughs> met but one of the be- biggest weirdos in the NFL that is like out and about about it. Like and you want to know something funny? their family so much they don't talk to him. Aaron Rodgers. Guy doesn't speak a single word to a single family member. Do you know how many businesses he oh. saved? Don't matter. You don't like your freaking brother, your dad. If my brother was on the Bachelorette, I'd be pissed too. <laughs> I would be hyped for him. Guys, pulling. Who you got, Taj? Um, I got uh, Packers also, and by a lot, I think uh, Aaron Rodgers and that offense is going to come out pretty disrespectful and just air it out. Disrespectful. <laughs> it's really, uh, you know instantly put the bears in their place and i look this is how it's going to be all game and it's i don't think the bears are going to put up much points until like the fourth quarter you know in garbage time um yeah you know like and and talking about the bears can we please get Allen robinson some help get him out of chicago or you know or they just need to build that o-line because i heard his they have good dude he's I don't he understand. The like, trade I thought I, like, I, no, you suck. You're not throwing you the ball. Literally, bro, it's awful. Like, I don't know how you have a guy like Allen Robinson and you're not, you know, you're just not making him useful, bro. He's he's a great receiver, but he's getting out targeted by a, a rookie or a second year guy, and um, and. You know, he's just not who he used to be, I guess, but we don't that's really know. Wild. That's, see, that's wild to me because Blake Bortles made him look great Went over there with yeah. the Jack. Like, he's got to get the ball. He's yeah, he's got to get the ball. And, like, I'm pretty sure he has, like, he has a streak going right now for no drop passes in the red zone or in the in the end zone. And, you know, they're just not giving him the targets there. They're not – I don't know. If, I know they can get him the ball deep. But they just haven't, so I don't know. But yeah. I, I it's definitely probably by twenty four. Love, <laughs> Love that twenty four. It, it's funny. Ever since we clowned Kevin King, it feels like he they've been playing so good. Their defense has been playing. Dude, un- everybody unreal. listens to average takes if you haven't heard, bro. <laughs> yeah. This is Every the hottest sports sh- podcast in the world right now. Yeah, Kevin we're, King we're sh- got offended hard. He saw said, "I'm balling now." Yeah, facts. Yeah, um, I also saw the Packers uh, designated Jari Alexander to return, so I don't know if he's big. or not. But second half of the season, you're getting your best cornerback. Love it. And he's oh, yeah. in the NFL. But they don't need to win, though. You think they might save him, you know, for playoffs? Yeah, yeah. I don't think he'll play, but I, I know they announced that he could practice. Like, once you bring him back, he has 21 days till you make him, like, active on your roster, so – I really don't think they play him versus the Bears this week. Good. Good. All right. And the finale, Monday night. And a great game. We got, we got past game. all the bad games. We got a Probably the actual game. game of the week. This is my game of the week. Yeah. yeah. Rams, Cardinals. Rams at Cardinals. Um, this and is a big game for both of them. Huge game, especially huge for Rams. Game. For the Rams. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah, Rams won eight out of their last nine games versus Arizona. Um Cardinals have been playing stellar. First team to ten and two. Um the Rams haven't been playing too well, but last week they looked like they finally figured it out. I mean OBJ. Jags. Yeah. Um the Jags. It was, it was, but you need you need games like that to win games like these. Those are morale boosters, you know. Get teams in in check. Get teams in the rhythm. Yep, they're like, oh, uh, we can win again. Huh. Exactly, oh. 
Yeah, oh. and I think it it'll be an island, but I'm going the Rams this week. Matt Stafford was my MVP winner in the beginning of the year. Um, I think this team figures it out. You know, they got Van Jefferson. They got so many weapons. Cooper yeah. Cup. I mean, no. there's no way this team should lose. I'm yes, going there Rams. Is, there is a way. I'm going yeah, Rams. There's a will. I'm going Rams. Um, there's a couple things that point out to me in this game. Matt Stafford's career versus teams above 500 second half of the season. I know that's a margin. But his career <laughs> versus good teams set later on in the season is very bad. Like, he doesn't seem to win. And I know that's on the Lions, and they're usually worse than worse off at this point of the season. But it's still going to be a tough game, you know. Matt Stafford's still transitioning into a, a guy who's going to be on winning games and the, the light, bright light on him. Like, it's all on him this Monday night. And it's a must win for them. I mean, they're eight and four in a division where if you lose this game, you're eight and five falling out, definitely out of division at that point. And, you know, I think that the end of their season isn't any easier. You know, I mean, they got the rent or the Seahawks next week, Vikings, Ravens, and then 49ers. So it's all competition teams, like teams that play up to competition. This mm-hmm. is definitely a game they must win. But even saying that, I'm going Cardinals. I think the Cardinals are a better team. They might not have the names, the faces, the recognition, but they do have guys. Don't need it and want it as much, though. You know, uh, I don't know. Ten and two already coming back. Ten and two yeah. already clinched. Want to save? Want to save their their team? You know. Yeah, but we so. got guys who haven't really played a lot this season who need to get in game shape for playoffs, and so those guys are still going to go hard. Kyler is not going to treat this like it's like high school football. He's going to definitely go all out. He just first game back last week looked great. I know it was only the Bears, but they're going to put up another game. And I think this Cardinals team is good and they're going to continue to roll. I don't think the Rams have the the secret sauce to beat them. Yeah, I don't either, man. Uh, I mean, the Cardinals were able to find a way to win with Colt McCoy. So uh, now that you have D Hop and Kyler back in the lineup, um, you know they're, they're going to be really hard to stop. I think it's definitely be a close game because you know it's the it's the divisional matchup, number one and two in the West, and um, you know the the Rams lost the Cardinals last time, if I'm not mm-hmm. uh, mistaken, and. Um, so, you know, they're definitely going to – they're going to try for this game. They have a, two healthy running backs. You see the way Michelle was toting the rock uh, mm-hmm. last – so, you know, you have him and a healthy Henderson. Then, uh, you know, the, their run game is going to be able to open up them passes to their three good receivers, um, very good receivers. Uh, so, you know, I think it's going to be a really close game. But Kyler Murray, man, he he finds his ways, and that, and that defense is really good. So I think the Rams just being – or the Cardinals being a, a better all-around team, I think it's going to – they're just going to squeeze by the Rams in another close game. Oh, yeah. and You you guys know where I'm going. I had Kyler Murray as my MVP guy for before the season started, and uh, I'm definitely sticking with that. But this is a, this is that stat you're talking about, Bob. Uh, there's actually numbers behind it. I'm going to give it to you. Thank Matt you. Stafford is five and sixty-two in his career versus teams that have won ten or more games. He's lost fifteen straight games to teams that have ten or more wins. Um, this is That's gonna be wild. number sixteen. I, I want to add to that. That's insane. Well, five and that 62? just yep, and that just shows that uh he's not the right guy for this situation in, in LA. He can't win these close games. He can't beat the good teams. Should have got um, Aaron. Moments too happen. big. Yeah, moments too big and. That's not a team thing. That's a personal thing. The moment's too big for you. You can't, you can't overcome that, no matter who's on your team. Yeah, um, but he's never had moments like this with team members, team players like this, teammates like this. You know, he has game changers on that he can throw to also. And with that, I mean, th- that outcome can be different. Those numbers can mean nothing with the new team he's on. I mean, I know he's played – this season has not been great, but I mean, he hasn't had games like this where his season's on the line, you know, where he has to prove himself as much. Like, I don't know. Well, and, and if, 
if his career is at any indication of how it's going to go, it's not good for him. Obviously, but. <laughs> and I Kyler mean, is, Kyler is going to click. He's on a roll. He only had like, he had under 200 passing yards. That connection be, could be off. You know, they haven't thrown, he hasn't thrown the D hop ball in a couple games. Roman, um, send in a prayer. I am. <laughs> I am. I'm trying to deny everything you guys are saying because I really need the Rams to win here, but. I don't know. It's going to be a good game. What's the in spread? Arizona? The other thing is One. the Cardinals. The and Cardinals and lead the league in points uh, scored per per game, and uh, when the Rams allow less than twenty four points, they're uh, eight and zero. When they allow more, they're zero and four. Twenty six is higher than twenty four. Got to go Cardinals here. <laughs> good math, man. Good math. Good, good math. Quick maths. <laughs> All right, let's get into the fantasy portion of our show. We're going to pick three fantasy guys, a quarterback, a running back, and wide receiver, and we're going to just give you who we think is going to go crazy, go wild, go stupid in their given matchups. Who wants to start us off? Anyone? Any call? I'll go first. Um, I got Dak Prescott against Washington this week. Uh, big game, big division game. Need him to perform with Ezekiel Elliott not being too healthy. I think he checks down to Tony Pollard a lot, and C.D. Lamb gets open. I got Dak Prescott booming this week. Love it. Nice. Um, I'll pitch in mine. I'm going to go Aaron Rodgers, the oh man who <laughs> owns Chicago. He owns, I own you. I own you. And he's going to own him again. I mean, that's just, in my eyes, obviously, Shenny's eyes as well. That's just the – I think that's the great matchup of the weekend um, for fantasy-wise. Aaron owns the Bears, and it's going to happen again, all over again. Love it. Love it. Rodgers was my pick, but I'm going to go ahead and switch it up to uh, Russell Wilson. Ooh, uh, okay, okay said earlier in the in the podcast man it's a it's a contract type game for him they're playing the weakest game in the rest of their schedule or weakest team excuse me and um you know I just think he's gonna just I know his fingers probably bugging him a little bit but I think he's just gonna find guys quick and short routes and they're gonna get some yak and and you know DK's just he's gonna be a man and not not get tackled you know he's gonna make them big plays and I think it's really gonna benefit Russell Wilson and I see him uh, I see him having, yeah, like at least 25 in fantasy. Yeah. Love that. He's going to get an extra $5 million because of this game right here. Watch. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm honestly just going anybody but Kirk Cousins here. <laughs> <laughs> <I'll say laughs> anybody, anybody but Kirk Cousins. Uh, that, that actually equals uh, – fuck it. I'm going to go Cam Newton. Mills? Oh, okay. Nope. Cam Newton about to have the <laughs> – Day of his life on Sunday, and I can't wait. Can't have that happen. Don't like that pick. All right. I mean, I, I could take that. Running backs. Who wants to start us off on running backs? Oh, shit. I can go. Uh, All right, Taj. Let's hear it. Uh, I am going with the man my school beat in college my freshman year, Austin Eckler. Oh, <laughs> Um, you know, they have a weak competition in the Giants. And uh, I think, you know, with those two big receivers being out, you know, they're going to have to rely on somebody. Justin Herbert's going to, you know, is going to find his his good running back. You know, if he wants to have to throw the ball, they're probably going to get him on the check downs. And he's going to run the ball really well through that, that weak defense. Um, you know, so I'm going Austin Eckler for 30. I like I love that. that. I'm pretty sure Austin Eckler is the only player right now in the NFL who has three receiving – or not three, seven receiving touchdowns and seven rushing touchdowns as well. Yeah. Hey. He's a dog. He's dog. a dog. Um, Shenny, you want to go? I stole your pick last time. I'll let you go in front of me. Yeah, well, um, I was going to pick Chuba Hubbard, but my quarterback's pick got messed up, so I had to go Carolina. I don't want to go Carolina, Carolina, because then that, that nobody's going off, you know. Nobody's <laughs> going off. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with a guy who's gonna be running the ball out in LA this weekend, Saquon Barkley. If they can feed him, I really think he's gonna have a good day. So give him the ball and let him eat. Saquon Barkley running back. Not mad. 
Not mad. I'm going to take Donta Foreman, Tennessee Titans. Um, I like his matchup versus Jags, man. I think that the Titans could get off to an early lead and just run the ball, try to protect Julio, Mr. Glass, man. Freaking Jones over there because Sir gets hurt every freaking week. But yeah, I think Sir hurts a lot. Ball. Yeah, Sir hurts a lot. Uh, run the ball, run it hard, and then just beat up on the Jags. Donta Foreman, number seven. I love the single digits. Love it. Damn, Damn, I should have picked this other guy I'm thinking of. <laughs> <laughs> that name scared me because I'm going Devontae Freeman. Close. Uh, Killing it against the Browns. Um, he's been playing well. Him and Lamar, um, that scheme they play, whoever could run the ball is working well. I like Devontae Freeman booming this week. Love that. Side note, if uh, you're not getting Devontae, I would go Javante, who's f- facing the Lions, who sucks. <laughs> Devontae yeah. Williams. That's also a good one. Side good note. Good one. All right, wide receivers. Let's wrap it up. Jenny, go ahead, start. Oh, no. No? Nope, I'll go. Um, I'm, I would pick this guy, but I can't because he's playing my team, so I'm going to let you guys pick him. <laughs> that's fine. Um, but I'm going to go with a tight end here, and I need him to have a absolute crazy week. Travis Kelsey, kaboom, and I can't wait. He hasn't had one in probably three, four weeks, and it's time. It is time. I need Travis Kelsey, kaboom. Any, no pick. tight ends have gone off since we had the argument who is the best tight end in the league. Yeah. Nope. Where? Nope. Yeah, because I've picked like three tight ends this year, and none of them have gone off. We all and picked tight ends that week, and yours yeah. didn't play, and then mine and Shinny's both had like one and two points. It was yeah. been bad news for tight ends since. Not good. Um, for wide receivers, I'm gonna go Cowboys wide receiver Michael Gallup. I I like Gallup. I think that in this divisional game, they're gonna key on the big name guys, and then Gallup's can just squeeze in there, catch a couple tutties, walk away. His toe touch in the corner That's might nasty. be the catch of the year. Yeah, it was nasty. And not not nicer than Santonio Holmes. San, nicer than Santonio Holmes any oh. given day of the week. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was beautiful. And I'm gonna just go Gallup. I think he keeps the hot hand and we score, 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 score. Yeah, I'm not mad. Who you got, Taj? Uh, uh you scared me. I was gonna go with uh CD Lamb, but I switched up last second. I've been this kind of teeter tottering with this guy, but since Bob, you were talking a little, little down on him, I'm gonna pick Julio Jones. Ooh. Uh, because, uh, you know, he, he's been out, you know, he, and when he has been playing, he hasn't been exciting, you know, but with AJ Brown being out and, uh, you know, them needing to throw to somebody, you know, I think he's going to actually have a really good day against the Jags. You know, I think it's going to be a coming out party for uh, Julio pretty much, you know, he's going to, he's going to touch down. He's in, but you know, yeah, he's going to touch down. He's going to get a lot of targets. And um, I think he's going to be the lead uh, target holder of, on their team. And I'm going uh, Julio Jones, Mr. Glass Boy. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Well, I took the Rams Island. So in order for that to be um, work out good in my favor, Matt Stafford has to throw somebody. And that's going to be Odell Beckham this week. You know, Cooper Cup is that is not the name yards. I thought you were going to say. Yeah. You know, I was going, <laughs> you like, you knew I was going to go not Cooper the Cup. Name. You but should no, have said Van Jefferson. What is going on in your mind Van right Jefferson? now? Van Jefferson? No. I need no. Van Jefferson. He's the third OJ. check down. He's the third <laughs> check down. Shady's think, thinking of his fantasy team when we're talking Only. Right yes. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> He's the third check down. I'm telling you. Cooper He's Cup's going to get covered this week. Odo Beckham's – that's going to make Odo Beckham wide open. He gets – I don't think he'll get too many yards, but he gets a couple of touchdown passes. All right. Well – I like that. You threw me for a loop at the end right there. Yeah. <laughs> week 14 or week 13? Oh, man, I forgot my ribbon. Four. Well, if, if you listen this far in the video, maybe you'll see it. <laughs> All right. Well, that is everything we got to tell you on this week's episode. Yes, week 14, pick ums, book it. Hey, Taj, thanks for coming on, bro. Next time yes, we got to do it in the studio. It. 
it, it's way cooler than Zoom. I freaking hate Zoom now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I uh, appreciate you guys uh, hosting me. It was a good experience. You know, the first podcast, I had fun. You know, I enjoyed talking sports. And I definitely want to yeah, get another another shot in the studio. Oh, yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah. All right, guys. Shout out to the Red Jacket That's Army. It. Yeah, Red Just... Jacket Army. That's lit. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be there. Yeah. Nothing wrong with being average, boys. We out. We out. Yes,